me Constance Cumby, author of The Hidden Dangers of the Rainbow, had stumbled onto this Maitreya figure in her research in the 80s. Her book, published in 1983, was the first book to give a full expose on Maitreya and Benjamin Krem. On page 21, she notes a Denver Post interview conducted by Jack Kisling speaking to Benjamin Krem, quote, Won't the advent of a single world religion annoy the hierarchies of all the current orthodox religions, I asked? More than that, he said with a smile. They will be shocked. I dare say, they will be among the last to accept the Christ. But according to Kisling, Krem said confidently, It will come, because it must. We will begin to live, he said, as potential gods." Unquote. Constance Cumby also notes that Krim is a Luciferian by citing a WLAC radio interview, quote, In a November 9, 1982 radio interview over WLAC, Nashville, Benjamin Krim told the entire Bible Belt that Lucifer came to planet Earth from planet Venus 18 and a half million years ago and made the supreme sacrifice for us." Unquote. Constance Cumby had direct contact with Benjamin Krem face to face in Detroit, Michigan. I had the opportunity to meet this brave woman and she showed me the place in which she had attended a lecture by Benjamin Krem. To a packed crowd, November 4th, 1981, and Bread for the World was out there, had tables, Oxfam, every group you could think of was sitting out there. They were passing out brochures. The brochure is reproduced in both of my books. Benjamin Krem came in. He opened, he gave some kind of a hand signal that looked something like that. And I thought at first he was waving to somebody, but the crowd appeared to flip into a trance. And then he started speaking and he was rotating his head. I can't even come close to It was as close to a 180 degree spin of a head as I've ever seen. How his head didn't snap off, I'll never know. And then he started talking and laying out what they were doing and the crowd was thoroughly under several degrees of hypnosis. I knew many people in that crowd the, from political circles and social circles in Detroit for many years. And I talked to some of them. And the common denominator was they had all been through one kind of mind control course or another, one type of new age class or another. I talked to a fellow behind me, Al Banks, and I said he was a film producer doing much of what you're doing now. And I said, Al, I know what I'm doing here tonight. What are you doing here? And he said, because, Connie, he said, I'm taking a course in miracles at Unity. He said, I've joined Unity. We're all required to take a spiritual growth class. I've taken a course in miracles. It was a class requirement that we be here tonight. And then he said, you know, Connie, I would have thought a progressive person like you would have joined Unity a long time ago. Well, then I started explaining to him exactly why I haven't. And he, like, snapped, the glaze snapped off his eyes for a little bit. He thanked me for telling him. And then Krem came in and started doing his thing. And at the end of the evening, they had been promised a, uh, an appearance by Maitreya, the Christ channeled through Benjamin Krem himself, that Maitreya would speak through Benjamin Krem. And Benjamin Krem asked everybody to join in the recitation of the Great Invocation. I told the woman standing next to me, I will not say the Great Invocation with you. I will say my own prayer. And she was a nice little prim, proper looking black lady. Could have been active in any black Baptist church in Detroit from her appearance. And she said, no, that's all right, honey. We all have our own paths to God. And I said, the reason I will not say the great invocation with you, the scriptures clearly said that the Antichrist would come denying that Jesus was the Christ. I said, Benjamin Krem has denied it all evening and said Jesus was not the Christ and this Maitreya was. And the woman said what Benjamin Krem had said. She said, there's been many Christs. I said, there's been one and his name is Jesus. And people turned from rows around and looked at me like I was crazy. 
and and so then Benjamin Krem came in and he started the hundred and nearly close to 180 degree spin of his neck again and the crowd, crowd's hypnotic trance appeared to deepen and he started out from the point of light within the mind of God may light spring forth ever and I went nice and clear and I'll tell you the acoustics in that building are wonderful I said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And I did that each and every stanza. And they got down to the last part, said, May light and love and power fulfill thee plan on earth, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. And I said, nice and loud and clear, I said, May Jesus Christ return to earth and end the evil present in this room tonight. Well, the funniest thing happened, or may I say, it did not happen. Benjamin Krem stood there. He waited, he waited, and he waited. He clearly was watching for something to come over him. And it didn't happen. And he finally said to the crowd, he said, that will be all. You are dismissed. And, of course, everybody was extremely disappointed. And we went to the door and I went walking out. I had brought some co-spies with me. They were kind of chickening out at that point and waiting for me. They were afraid of being ripped limb to limb. And I stood down there and a number of those people knew me and they were just furious with me. And I stood there calm, cool, and collected. And I said, well, I said, if you're Maitreya the Christ, Betreya the Christ, or whatever his name's supposed to be, were everything he's cracked up to be. One lousy Christian in there saying the Lord's Prayer shouldn't have stopped him. And Benjamin Krem has never come back to Detroit, although that was probably the most successful night financially and crowd-wise that he'd had in the United States. The following is a video taken in Iraq at a Shia Muslim festival. Share International and Benjamin Krem have put out that this is indeed an appearance of Maitreya, the supposed world teacher for the Age of Aquarius One World Government. Commenting on this video, Share International reports, quote, Imam Mahdi, unexpected appearance, proclaims the title of a video posted on YouTube. A miraculous figure of glowing brilliant white light appeared on a video filmed in Karbala, Iraq, on the night of Ashura, 6 January 2008. This Shia Muslim ceremony commemorates the martyrdom of the grandson of the Prophet Hussein, whose tomb is in Karbala. Benjamin Krem's master confirms that the light figure is Maitreya, Imam Mahdi to the Muslims, and that his dance-like movements with a sword remind us of his coming with the sword of cleavage. Could this be real, or is it a hoax? Is Maitreya real, or is he a hoax? Whatever the case may be, it turns out that it is not only New Agers and occultists who believe in this Maitreya, but politicians, presidents, and elitists also follow Maitreya. Wayne Peterson, a retired American diplomat and admitted supporter of Maitreya with connections to the Pentagon and the United Nations, stated the following about Mikhail Gorbachev and the White House in a Vision magazine interview June 20, 2000. Reporter Kendall Klug asks, I believe Mikhail Gorbachev has publicly stated his belief of the existence of Maitreya. Do you know if this is true? Wayne Peterson answers, I have one little story I could tell you about Gorbachev. A friend of mine who has worked with the World Bank went to the Heads of State Conference in Europe and gave a speech where he borrowed many of Maitreya's ideas for economic reform out of a book by Benjamin Krem that I had given him. He told me that he had read the book on his flight to Europe and realized that his keynote address to these world officials, especially presidents and prime ministers, it was a very high level meeting, was going to be very boring with many having heard similar sentiments over and over. So he thought he would throw in some of Maitreya's ideas into the speech. The country he was in had a reigning monarch who invited him to lunch the next day. When he showed up for lunch, there were 16 to 20 people there, including Mr. Gorbachev. The monarch of this country said to my friend, I suppose you're wondering why we invited you here today. Well, we are all curious about where you got those ideas for your speech which you presented yesterday. 
He said that my friend Wayne gave me a book written by Benjamin Krem about Maitreya's mission. Immediately they nodded their heads. We thought so, was the apparent response. That's why we invited you here. We all know of Maitreya, and we're doing what we can for him. But we are not able to say anything publicly, because we are world leaders. We each have our own public to deal with. Only one person there stood up and said that they could use his name to legitimize these sightings, and that was Mikhail Gorbachev. He was the only man in the room who would say, use my name if you want. The reporter asks, do you think President Clinton has had an experience with Maitreya? Wayne Peterson, I don't know if President Clinton has. I believe that former President Bush has. We used to have transmission meditation groups that Maitreya had asked us to do around Washington, D.C. People who were interested in Maitreya and the reappearance story would get together once a week in Georgetown, in the home of President Bush's main counselor at the White House. President Bush came over to this house for dinner one night, and the hostess was in the dining room as President Bush asked her, What do you think? I'm running against Clinton in this election. Am I going to win? She said, No, Mr. President, you are not. Maitreya has already said that you are going to lose to Clinton. Bush never challenged her, but merely said, Yeah, yeah. He didn't ask who Maitreya was. He was very quiet and then said, I think I've got to go now. Benjamin Krem has said many times that he had heard from one of Maitreya's associates that Maitreya had appeared to Bush and that they had a discussion in the White House. So that incident with my meditation group seemed to confirm that Bush did in fact know of Maitreya. I do know people in the White House have been visited by Maitreya many times. And the people I'm talking, I've seen on the front page of the Washington Post, standing next to the president. In a December 19, 2008 London Telegraph article, major media organization, Mick Brown praises Maitreya and Benjamin Krem, stating, quote, This week has come encouraging news for anyone with an interest in signs and wonders, or desperate for a chink of light in the prevailing gloom, which probably means most of us, a savior is at hand. I think even that, even that does not describe why the world has changed so much and why the world has turned so much toward a new world order and a new kind of civilization. Maitreya is one of the, the main uh, theosophy in Maitreya. Uh, the whole UN movement, the, the whole Lucius Trust movement, uh, World Goodwill, uh, they're going out of the way to try to discredit it and say, well, you know, Jesus, all he really was was a disciple of Maitreya. He's still a disciple of Maitreya. Maitreya's over him, and Jesus, they believe what happened is, is Jesus heralded in the age of Pisces. Now what we're going to be doing is now we need to herald in the age of Aquarius. This is where the new world order comes in, and this is what Maitreya is going to bring. So we're going to de-emphasize Jesus, and we're going to move over to Maitreya. Jesus is just a disciple of um, Maitreya anyway, according to them. In 1919, the Theosophist Alice Bailey was supposedly contacted by one of these ascended masters known as the Tibetan Dijwal Kul. From 1919 to 1949, Bailey would write 24 books, and according to her, she would do automatic writing, a New Age way of channeling and letting the Force write for you. Bailey would create Lucifer Publishing, which would distribute the works of Helena Blavatsky and the Theosophical Society. She would later change the name to Lucius Trust because Lucifer Publishing was too controversial. Lucius Trust evolved into a large New Age organization, and it is still active today. Lucius Trust is also directly associated with the United Nations. According to the United Nations International Geneva Yearbook 2009, quote, The Lucius Trust is recognized by the United Nations as a non-governmental organization and is represented at regular briefing sessions at UN headquarters. The Lucius Trust is on the roster of the United Nations Economic and Social Council. Thus, Theosophy and the New Age are now fused into the United Nations, which gives a medium for the New Age agenda to unfold. The aim of corrupt organizations like Lucius Trust and the UN is to create a one-world government, New World Order, which is in accord with the supposed Age of Aquarius. 
Many high-level elitists have voiced their approval.